Fusion is an amazing process that happens in the middle of stars where small nuclei of atoms join together to make bigger ones and release copious amounts of energy. And we hope to be able to harness that physics and that technology associated with it to make power here on Earth. Fusion might be the perfect source of energy because we have millions of years worth of fuel. It's safe, it's, um, it's clean. The catch is that, as you know, it's one of the most difficult science and engineering challenges ever undertaken. So if you want to do fusion, you've got to get a temperature of about 200 million degrees. And to do that, you've got to hold your fuel in a cage of magnetic field. Andrei Sakharov, the Russian dissident, had in the 1950s the most successful design, which is called the tokamak. And the tokamak is a cage of magnetic field in the shape of a ring donut. In a spherical tokamak, what we do is we squash that plasma down into something that looks more like a cord apple. So you've only got now a small uh, hole in the center of the plasma. And what that does is it obviously makes the fusion system a bit more compact, but what's less obvious, it allows us to get to very high values of plasma pressure compared to the pressure of the magnetic field that's confining the plasma. And the higher the magnetic pressure, the more fusion reactions that you get. Uh, as you look around the world today, there's a surge in the interest in spherical tokamaks. We're entering a very exciting time here at PPPL and at NSDX. This enormous team of engineers and physicists and technicians have just about finished constructing the NSTX upgrade facility. There's two key components to this upgrade project. One is to replace some of the magnets, not all, but some with larger, more high power magnets that will enable us to apply higher field strengths for longer pulses. The other upgrade is to double the amount of power we have so we'll be able to make plasmas with more current that are hotter with more power going in for longer pulses. We intend to make our test plasma that would commission the facility in the next month to month and a half. If you're producing copious amounts of heat in a small volume, because these are much smaller devices, you're going to have an exhaust problem. Your exhaust is going to be too intense. And so the MAST device and NSTX are testing out different ideas to cope with that very powerful exhaust. We modify the magnetic fields outside the plasma to divert that plasma. The particles are going around a lot further along the magnetic field and therefore they lose more energy as they go. So you end up with less energy arriving spread out over a larger area. We're about halfway through the build. Um, the original mass experiment came to an end in 2013. Uh, it was sited here as you see in the pit, pit area behind us. Uh, we stripped that out in three months and uh, ever since have been pulling it into its various modules and building these modules back up so that we can assemble it and start operating this machine starting next year. At Tokamak Energy, we are building uh, small tokamaks which are prototype. Each prototype has its own goal. The first uh, tokamak that we've built, which is behind me, uh, was to demonstrate long pulses in, the, in such a small device using microwave power. The next uh, device we've built uh, was uh, more on engineering and we used high temperature superconductors in this tokamak for the first time. The next stage we are working at is um, high field uh, spherical tokamak. In the second half of this century is where we will really have challenges greatly enhanced in mitigating carbon production and that's where fusion will be critical to the world. And at that point we're going to say okay we need a fusion reactor and we need it by the middle of the century. We've got to push down the cost and scale of those reactors so that when we come to market it's cost effective. These devices will do that.